Hi, my name is Bob Driscoll, and I'm the Director of Athletics here at Providence College, and it's my pleasure to welcome you to another exciting edition of Inside Friartown, brought to you by our good friends at Cox Sports. Well, ladies and gentlemen, as you can see, I'm here at a sold-out alumni hall to tip off the start of our men's and women's basketball season. We've got a lot of wonderful new players, and we want you to be part of the action. So if you haven't bought your tickets yet, be sure to do so, because we're going to have a lot of fun this year here in Friartown. So we hope you enjoy the show. Sit back, relax, enjoy another great edition of Inside Friartown. And remember, as always, go Friars! <laughs> Hi everyone, I'm Shauna Hassett and welcome to this November edition of Inside Friartown. On today's show we're going to focus on men's college basketball. We'll hear from head coach Keno Davis and several of his players. But up first, Cox Sports' Scott Cordishi sat down with sports writer Kevin McNamara and college hoops expert Vin Parisi for the Rhode Island College Hoops preview show. They'll discuss the landscape of Rhode Island college basketball and also give us their expectations of how they think Providence College is going to fare this year. Let's take a look. Welcome back to Cox Sports College Basketball Preview Show from inside the Con Cannon Fitness Center at Alumni Hall on the campus of Providence College. Scott Cordishi alongside Ben Parisi and Kevin McNamara. And Kevin, year two for Keno Davis and the Friars. A lot of new faces for PC fans to look at on the hardwood this year but also some returning veterans who will be leaned on heavily, starting with Sherrod Curry. It's a transition year for the program. It's awful hard to lose, you know, four or five seniors and keep the ball rolling, but Keno Davis is very fortunate to have some of the holdovers that he does have. Sherrod Curry, a fifth-year senior point guard. Those are so rare in college basketball these days, and Sherrod has the ability to be the, one of the best leaders throughout the Big East, and they're going to lean heavily on him. The other Georgia kid is Marshawn Brooks, and anyone who was kind of sleeping on Marshawn last year, they woke up a little bit and they sh saw the type of talent that this kid has and he is a much better player transitioning into his junior year. He's, he's added some strength. He had a great off-season uh, week with the Paul Pierce Skills Camp up in Boston. I think that's expanded his confidence in his game. And uh, Keno's going to rely very heavily on those two guys in his back to it. Up front, it's Greedy Peterson, a red shirt last year, Scott, from Brooklyn. Uh, pogo stick type jumper, run and, run and shoot kind of guy, kind of fits exactly the way Keno Davis wants to play. And he's greedy when it comes to cleaning the glass and getting those rebounds, isn't he? Yeah, Keno has compared his uh, rebounding skills to Dennis Rodman, kind of that undersized jumping jack kind of player, and he does have a little Rodman, without the hair of course, uh, type of player. Kevin, how about some of the new faces for Friar fans to keep an eye on? Well, they're going to see an awful lot of them because with the uh, limited holdovers that Keno has, He's going to play an awful lot of the newcomers. Probably most important would be the two point guards, Vincent Council from Brooklyn and Johnny Lacey from Milwaukee, Scott. Both guys uh, push the tempo. They, they want to run and will be able to slide uh, Sherrod Curry off the ball at times a little bit. Sherrod got worn down as last season uh, wore on. Opposing defenses and especially pressing really bothered Providence. The addition of those two kids is really going to help. Uh, Jucos, they have two Jucos, Kyle Wright and Russ Permenter. Both need to play. You bring Jucos in for a reason to kind of be the, those stopgap kind of players. They're both very important. Uh, I've been impressed with Luke Mondi, uh, a freshman from Michigan. His ability to shoot the ball uh, is really important in, again, uh, Keno's up-tempo style. And uh, up front, James Still and Dean Bats, both two freshmen, very good uh, potential going forward. It's a chance that one of those two is likely to be red-shirted. That's kind of a decision that's still out there. There are no easy nights in the best conference in college basketball, the Big East Conference, and it will be a tough road to hoe for the Friars, but an interesting one to watch this season. Earlier, we uh, were down Cox Sports along with Vin Parisi down in New York for Big East Media Day, and we checked in with some of the other Big East coaches and players and got their thoughts on this year's PC Friars team. Davis has got an incredible future, in my opinion, as a coach. His style is very difficult to play against. He's going to be, attract, over the years, the kind of players 
They're better than what people think because still some people can shoot the basketball. I, I know they lost a lot, uh, but if they can, they, they, on given nights, they're going to drive people crazy because they have some very good players. Bottom line is that, that uh, you got to prepare for the Keno Davis style. You usually don't say that about a young coach. John Beeline was the last guy I talked about, a different kind of style. Well, I think Keno did a great job last year. He got that team running and gunning and, and really playing great basketball offensively. And, uh, you know, uh, Obviously, they lose a lot of guys, and whenever you lose a lot of guys, you know, we're all wondering, you know, what are we going to be doing now? I did a, a Drake game when he coached there that one year, and uh, he's an excellent coach. There's no doubt about it. The, the apple did not fall far from the tree. And uh, what I like about Kino is that he, um, he can be demanding, but he lets his guys play. And I know this is a very young group right now at Providence, but... I had a chance to, you know, watch Sherrod Curry play. Marshawn Brooks was at the Paul Pierce camp that I coached at this summer up in Boston, and I'm a big fan of his. He's, he's a guy that could really break out and be a quality Big East player. And then I know they got some young players that uh, they're very high on. So uh, Providence fans are not that patient, but I think they need to be patient with this team because there's a lot of uh, transition in the league, and, and Keno's got a really young team. But uh, I, I've always been impressed with how he's carried himself. And, and I think he's going to do a really good job. Playing against Providence, it was it was a it was a it was a pretty good game. You know, Sherrod Curry, of course, he's a great point guard. You know, veteran point guard. He 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 he's, he's just great for them. You know, and he, he does a great job. The matchup between Sharon Curry and me was good last year because he's a very quick guard, and I'm the much bigger guard. So. I, in order for me to stay in front of him, I have to use my quickness and stuff like that. So that's one thing that I really worked on this summer was my quickness. But he's Sharon Curry, he's a great player, and he's just an experienced point guard as well. And it was a great matchup for me because I was a young player coming into the league, so it was good for me to match up with an experienced guard to see how it is and learn from him as well. The long and storied history, the crowd is ready to charge the floor, and Providence has shocked number one Pittsburgh. Hey, we got out, we got outplayed and we got beat. You know, I mean, uh, they played well, we didn't. Uh, I was impressed how we battled back. We had a huge uh, lead. Uh, we were down a bunch early and then we got it back down. We didn't play great. We just kind of fought our way back into it. But hey, that was uh, it was a great win for them and. Uh, um, you know, it's, you got in our conference. You got to be good every night, and we weren't good that night. And they were, and they deserved to win. And uh, you know, I, I compliment them on on, uh, on how well they played. So I think it was uh, it was great. But it's always a great place to play. We've had great success playing up there. But I've always appreciated the fans, the crowds that they've had. And so uh, it's a great college basketball town, as we know, Providence. So, Vin, as you can see, a year ago there was a lot of talk about a veteran Providence basketball team with their point guard returning, coming off of a season uh, filled with injury, and now a much more inexperienced Friars team Big East coaches are talking about. Yeah, and obviously Keno Davis and his staff realize that they've lost a lot of guys, and that's where this early non-conference slate is going to be very important before you get into that beast of the Big East conference schedule. They have some local games, but they also have some big road games. But I think it's truly these first two months are important because it's going to sh show Keno and the staff where they stand in some areas. Let's take a look at the non-conference schedule, Vin, and I'd like to get your thoughts on some of these non-conference games upcoming for the Friars. Right, at, at, at Alabama is, is always going to be a battle whenever you're playing an SEC team like that on the road. Taking young kids on the road to play in that type of atmosphere, you find out a lot about your guys. Obviously, Boston College at home is going to be a true, true test early as to how their point guards and their guards could handle the perimeter pressure. And then you look at some other local games. You have Northeastern. The one to keep your eye on, though, is at Rhode Island. As you know, the Friars have not had a lot of success recently in the Ryan Center. And then tapping it off with that local game December 7th versus Brown. And Kevin, the Friars also have some marquee Big East teams coming to the dunk this year, highlighting their Big East schedule. Friar fans are very fortunate this year, Scott. You know, an awful lot of times the schedule comes out and you say, ooh, you know, Connecticut's not coming in, or Georgetown's not coming in, or Syracuse is not coming in. They're all coming in. <laughs> and throw in Louisville as well. So, uh, again, you'll see the iron, good and bad. You know, you always want to see those teams live, but they'll be bringing the horses in when they come into the dunk. Well, it sounds like Keno's Friars certainly have their work cut out for them in a very tough Big East Conference this season. 
But here in Friartown, our enthusiasm is very high and we'll be rooting for them. You can catch the Rhode Island College Hoops preview show in its entirety with interviews from all the Big East coaches and several of the players all November long on Cox Sports, local on demand.